Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create this frosted glass effect that we see on iPhones. It's really interesting and it's super fun to create it in Figma and it's actually not that simple to be very honest. It is quite hard, uh, but I'm gonna show you how to do this um, in the most simplest way possible ever. Before I get started, if you haven't checked out my mega product design course for beginners, make sure to check it out. Link will be down below in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Okay, so um, there are two things that I'm gonna show uh, and I'm gonna do this a little bit differently in both cases. The first one is we have this something over here where we see this on the app store, you've got this blur effect and then it sort of fades away into the background. I'm gonna show you how I've done that. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've pretty much done that over here. Um, and then the other one over here is, I've done it on the dynamic island over here. Uh, I've sort of tried to recreate it um, and I've tried my best to make sure that it works. And uh, there's a very interesting technique on how to make this happen. By the way, if you haven't checked out my video on recreating the dynamic island animations in After Effects, make sure to check that out. Link will be down below in the description. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start off over here and uh, I'm gonna keep this as a reference so that I can actually go ahead and you know pick values if I want. So quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a rectangle, I'm gonna press R on my keyboard, and then I'm just going to go ahead and match it. I'm just gonna scale this so that we match it correctly. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna go over here, and uh, this is gonna have a radius of six because I already know that. The next thing is I'm gonna go and quickly get an image. I'm gonna to go to Unsplash, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna choose architecture. Uh, maybe I'm gonna just gonna choose um, city. And I think I tapped city before and I'm going to, maybe I'm gonna use a different image this time. Let me see if there's some uh, interesting one that we can pick. I just want something that has a lot of color. So I'm gonna probably pick this one. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna close this. I'm going to uh, command shift C, sorry, uh, I don't know what the shortcut is. So let me just show that over here is copy as copy properties. Okay. So that's option command C or alt control C on windows. I'm just going to copy that and then select this and paste. And basically what that does is that applies the fill over here. So you don't really have to do any crazy masking effects. And the problem is this resets the corner radius. I'm just going to get that back to six and uh, there we go. Perfect. Now, Couple of things that we want to do, I'm just gonna keep this on the side so we can see what's happening. The first thing is I'm gonna create a rectangle, okay? And I'm going to get this rectangle or rather I'm just gonna create a frame or let's do with the rectangle first, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and make this, pull this all the way to the here. And then I'm gonna select these two and then group them into a frame. So I'm gonna right click and choose frame selection or you can choose the shortcut um, option command G and then we're going to make this also six and clip content so that the corner gets saved over here. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to select this and I'm going to go ahead and make this linear. Uh, actually I'm going to make it solid and then I'm just going to make it white for now. And then I'm going to come here down to the effects. Okay. And I'm going to add a background blur. Okay. Now, what background blur does is it blurs the background and not the layer. Because if I go ahead and set this to layer blur, you can see, and I increase the value, the layer gets blurred. We don't want that. We want to blur the background. Now, if I go ahead and set this to a big number like 50, nothing happens. And the reason is because we actually need to go and reduce the opacity of the fill layer quite a bit to something like 10%. And now you can see we get this very nice frosted glass effect. I'm actually gonna go and uh, see what the values were. Um, so I think my values were, okay, it was just a five and then 30%, right? So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna set the blur to five, which is pretty fine. And then this is going to be 30. Now, the problem here is that we sort of do get an effect, but we're not able to get this gradient effect. So what you ideally want to do is you wanna come over here and then instead of linear, instead of solid, you wanna set that to linear and then you want to reset this. So then you have something that looks like this. Okay, so now the opacity of this is zero, and then here you have this to be, uh, you know, 100 at the bottom. Now, that's looking good. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to select the effect, and you want to add another effect, and I want to call this layer blur. So you're applying background blur and layer blur to the same layer, okay? And now we're going to bump up this. I don't know what the value is, so I'm just going to quickly check that. Uh, this was around 40, so we can bump that up to 40. 
okay and now we get this amazing gradient effect right now the problem is that the problem with layer blur is that it doesn't blur out the corners so the only way to fix it is you can just select the rectangle and you can just go ahead and increase it until you lose the blur amount and then you can do the same thing on the right side and you can do the same thing on the left side as well okay so now you can see we're getting some sort of a very nice blur effect now the other interesting thing that you can do is add some color to this. So in this example, uh, what I have actually done is the color is not really white. It's some sort of a light blue to a dark blue, right? And you can play around with this. So you can select the linear gradient and uh, you can choose, um, I mean, let me, let me actually see what we can get. I'm going to take the darker one and then I'm just going to apply this dark color. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to select the light one make the light as well. It doesn't do much of a difference, but you can still, you know, go ahead and get the sort of results that you need. So for example, this is a little white and then this is a little bluish. So totally depends on you. If you have a different image, then you might want to try something else. Okay. Now the thing is we already have this and because this is mainframe is clipping the content, then everything is looking perfect. Now, the other interesting thing is maybe I want to reduce down the layer blur of this to like 30 or something, or maybe 35. All right, and reduce this down. You can see that here we have the text in the logo. So let's go ahead and make this text as well. So I already have this. I'm gonna take that and then just drop that over there. Uh, I'm just gonna move it by, I don't know, I don't know how, how, what is it? Maybe I'm just gonna move it by eight on the bottom and eight on the left. Okay, something like this. I don't really know uh, what it is, maybe 10. Now what you want to do is you want to uh, select your text layer that you have over here, all right? And you want to go to layer and then in the layer styles, you want to choose overlay. And what overlay does, it, it goes ahead and pulls all the colors from the background element. So if I were to take this and move it on the top, you can see that it's pulling the background uh, color over here as well. Now, if you see the difference over here, that this text is actually, you know, not that, you know, grabbing a lot of that, those colors, but this is too much. So what you ideally want to do here is you want to go ahead and duplicate this. So you have another one on top. And uh, this also is quite bright. So you want to set this back to normal so that it becomes a completely white text. And then you probably want to reduce the opacity of this, right? To maybe 50, 50 is maybe too much. So maybe we make that 60 or 65 and uh, you're still pulling colors, um, but you're doing it in a much better way. So if we go ahead and move this over you over here, you can see that uh, it's going to pull the color. So here it's, you can see that's pulling the red colors over there. And if you come over here, um, you can see that it's pulling uh, some sort of a purple color. You can drop the opacity even more if you want, if you actually wanted to pull the colors, uh, maybe even drop it down to like 40%. Um, and you can see it, you know, sort of pulling the colors. Okay, maybe I'm gonna keep it to like 60. Yeah, so that's how you go ahead and um, make this effect. Uh, it's super simple as, uh, as you saw, it's super interesting. So the trick here is to set a linear gradient. Okay, now, Next, come here to the next one where we have the dynamic island animation. Um, this is gonna be a little bit more fun, so let's see how to do this. Okay, now I've tried this on two different layers. One is on a text layer and the other one is on an image. And as you can see, it slowly starts fade away and then the bottom part is a little bit um, richer, okay? Um, now the principles are the exact same. So first of all, I have the actual pill component and it just has a drop shadow over here. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that there's a drop shadow. Maybe the drop shadow is too much. I'm gonna drop that to like 50, all right? And the next thing here is that we have this um, rectangle that we just made. So that rectangle, uh, I've this basically the same rectangle. Now, if you look at the values that I use over here, we have a layer blur, a background blur, and a linear blur. Uh, and over here, what I've done is I've done the same thing, but the values are very different. Okay, so I'm going to actually hide everything um, so that we sort of do this one by one. So of course, first of all, we have a linear gradient over here. So it starts with this on the top, all right, which is 100%. And then down below, um, we have uh, a 0%. Okay, and I can actually bring this even more down if we want because we want the uh, gradient to start working from here. And I've set the value to 10%. So if I set it to 100%, oh, actually I wanna hide these two, okay? If I set this to 100%, you can just see that we have like a linear gradient. So I've reduced this to 10%. And then I'm going to add a background blur first, 
Okay, as you can see, we have a background blur. Now the background blur is just one pixel because if I make it more, then you can see the blur value is quite a bit, right? And if you just compare the word off over here and see here, you can see that this is quite a bit. So I'm just going to have it somewhere around one or two. I think um, I think two is fine um, and maybe even one is fine, right? Now we still don't actually get a nice effect. All right, it, it isn't good enough. So if I go ahead and make this to two, you can still see that over here, it, it gets so weird, right? You can see that there's this line and it sort of gets cut and it doesn't look realistic. As you can see, it looks very ugly over here, right? You can see that it's like super ugly. So the way we wanna fix it is if I go ahead and just reset the position, uh, I'm gonna set that to two and I'm gonna apply a layer blur to fix that issue, right? So if we take a look at this and I'm just gonna add like a layer blur and that sort of blurs it out a little bit more, right? And here the blur value is so less, it's like two. Sorry, the layer blur is two and the background blur is two as well. So I'm gonna reduce the background blur a bit to one so that it looks, so this looks quite too much. As you can see, it's, it's not realistic. And then if I reduce that down to one, it looks a little bit more realistic, okay. And the layer blur, obviously, uh, if we increase it, it increases the value. And then if I decrease it to one, uh, it one doesn't really do a good job. So two is something that, that makes more sense. There we go. And even if we go ahead and reduce the opacity of the layer of uh, the, you know, the fill layer, you can see that because it's zero, there's no fill. And we go ahead and slowly increase it. Uh, we get something nice. Um, so maybe even something like eight sort of works. Right, it's really hard to get the exact values. I don't really know how Apple usually does it. So if I set this to one and then layer blur, we probably set that to two as well. I think that's a fair uh, thing. And I've applied the same values here as well, which is 10%, two and one. Uh, so maybe you wanna set the layer blur, the background blur to one, which I already have, right? So something like this makes it a little bit better. And as you can see, uh, it's getting blurred over here and then proposal status text is um, not blurred out. Okay, now the other thing that I can do is maybe I can take this layer and then push it all the way to the top. If Let's see if that changes anything. No, it really doesn't change anything. But well, then over here you have some sort of realism uh, over there and that's looking pretty good. Right, so that's pretty much how you go ahead and create this frosted glass effects in Figma, uh, Apple signature blur effect. And of course in code it's done in a very different way. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.